told you we'd be applying a little bit of what we know, so let's take a look at this question. The Mormons traveled to Utah by a covered wagon in 1847. They tied a rag to a wheel to keep track of the distance they traveled. I'm not going to draw you this wagon wheel. Okay, the diameter of the wheel was 4.66 feet. How far did the rag travel each time the wheel made a complete rotation? So let me, let me kind of diagram this out just a little bit. Okay, so now I have my handy dandy circle. Okay, so I want to talk about the parts of the circle. All right, first of all, a circle, a circle, a circle is a two-dimensional figure. That's why it's flat here. A two-dimensional flat figure with all points the same distance from this given point. The given point is called the center. Okay, so every point is the same distance from this center. Now we have a radius of the circle. A radius is a line segment that goes from the center. Now I don't know if that's absolutely in the center, but it's pretty close. Okay, it's supposed to be the center. The radius is a line segment that goes from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. There are, and the plural of radius is radii, there are an infinite amount of radii in a circle, and they're all the same, okay? Because, remember, points are equidistant from that given point. So a radii is a line segment from the center to any given point on the circle. So I can come here, or here, or here, or here, anywhere I want to be. Now we have a diameter. A diameter is actually made up of two radii together. It is a line segment formed by passing through the center but connecting two points on the circle. So that is a diameter of the circle. And notice it is made up of two radii. So that's really, really important. Okay, diameter equals two times a radius. It was made up of two radii. So, let's take a look at this next question so we can fill in the blank. It says, if the radius of a circle, now remember radius is the line segment that's just from the center to a point on the circle. If the radius is 3.5, if the radius is 3.5 inches, we want to find the diameter. Okay. Well, if the radius is 3.5, remember the diameter is made, made up of two of them. So the diameter is 3.5 plus 3.5, or 2 times 3.5, which is 7 inches. Okay, and just to make sure you understand diameter, it's got to go through the center, but it doesn't have to go that way. It could go that way, right? But it's got to go through the center. All right, now, what if we go the other way? If the diameter of a circle is 12 inches, so that means this, this is 12 inches straight across, we want to know what is the length of a radius. Well, the radius must equal then 6, because if that's 6 from here to here, and that's 6 from here to here, we have the whole length of the diameter, which is 12. So the radius is 6 inches. Pretty cool. Remember, the diameter is twice the radius, or two radii together. Now, I want to bring it back somewhere so that we can move forward. Kind of cool, right? Two steps back, one step forward. All right, let's take a look at the perimeter of these following two figures. By the way, a circle is not a polygon. The reason a circle is not a polygon is it's because it's not made by straight line segments. Okay, but I'm going to move the circle out of the way for a second because I'm going to need him again, so I'm not going to throw him out or nothing. I want to take the rectangle that you see and the triangle, and I want to find the perimeter. Let's remind you how to do that. So here comes the rectangle. Okay. And this side is 0 .00, 0 0.006 inches. This side is 2.41 inches. It's not really drawn a scale. Okay, and the triangle. This side is 1.09 inches. Same thing here, 1.09 inches. And this is 0.2 or 0 0.2 inches. Let's get him straight. Seems to be falling down. Okay, let's talk about perimeter again. Perimeter, remember, is the distance around the figure. So remember that in a rectangle, the opposite sides are equal. So if this is 2.41 inches, so is this. If this is 0 0.006 inches, so is this. And now I can get the perimeter by adding them all up. Or even quicker, I can say that my perimeter 
equals 2 times 0 0.006 plus 2 times, two, oh, he doesn't like to stay up, 2.41. All right, so let's take a look at this. We multiply that by 2, so we have 0 0.006 times 2, and we get 12 carried to 1. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 0 is 0. And remember, three places, no place, so no place, get that, no, forget it. Okay, three places here, and you get 0 0.012. So that's this guy. Oh, he does, does not like to stay up. Not enough magnet on him. Okay, and then 2 times 2.41. I'm giving up on that rectangle. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. Remember, two places, no place, gives us two places. So this is 4.82. Just to remind you how to do that. I'm going to draw him in because he's making me a little crazy. Oh, that's so much better. Now mine's tilted. Okay. Here we go. Let's add these. That means I have to line up my decimals, right? Oh, we're getting this total review going on. 0 0.012. I'm going to add that to 4.82. Remember to line up my decimals. You may want to use a little placeholder. So here's for the little placeholder, dude. Some of you may want to do that for the ones place as well. And then you got 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 plus 0 is 4. So it's 4.832 inches or 4 and 832 thousandths, THS, you know, 4.832. Okay, now take a look at this triangle. For the triangle, I have to add up all the sides. So this is easy enough just to line up and add. 1.09, 1.09, and 0 0.2. I'll put a little placeholder. 9 plus 9 is 18. Carry to 1. You get a 3. 2.38. Is it still inches? It is inches. 2.38 inches. And that's perimeter. Distance around the figure. Okay. Well, we have a little problem. Remember our question. Our question was that the Mormons took a rag and tied it around the wheel and they wanted to go around around well, here's what they wanted. They wanted this. They wanted to make one complete revolution of the circle. So what they want is they wanted the perimeter of the circle. They want to start, make a complete revolution. So they want the perimeter of the circle. Actually, in a circle, we don't call it perimeter. We actually call it circumference. But notice the big problem we have with a circle. Where are the sides? I don't see any sides. Do you see a side? How am I going to add up all the sides if there are no sides? That seems ridiculous. So what's going to have to happen here is we're going to have to get a formula for the peri perimeter of a circle or circumference of a circle, which, you'll see, which you see in your notebook. Okay, Circumference of a circle is the same as perimeter. In order to show you how to do this, we're just going to take a walk over here and look at something. We promised that we'd learn how to find the circumference of a circle, and I'll show you how to do it. So let's start by showing you that I have some circular things here. We have a little cup. Yeah, that came from my bathroom. was not used. It's okay. And this circle is smaller than this circle, but I just want to make a point about it. It doesn't matter if it's a big circle or a little circle, or possibly a really little circle. That's a bad thing. Okay, or possibly a really little circle. Oh, we'll see? That was cool. Okay. Or again, a really little circle. Or a much bigger circle, does not matter, okay? So no matter what the size of the circle, big here, okay, doesn't matter. I'm going to take my handy dandy little tape measure. I'm going to move everything out of the way so you can see this. And I'm going to take the circumference of this circle. So that means I'm going to measure around the circle. And then I'm going to take the diameter, which we talked about, which is across the center of the circle. And when I do that, I'm going to divide, and I can do it on all of these little circular things, and I always get the exact same number. That number is 3.14159 dot, 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 keeps going. It's an irrational number because it never, ever, ever ends. But the fact that that's, that same number was remarkable. It was so remarkable that somebody said, let's give that number a name. And they did, 
and it was the name pi. So we call 3.14 dot 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 pi. For short, we use 3.14 to do problems, or 22 over 7. Okay, so now we understand that pi, pi is an irrational number. Let's talk about that. We already talked about rational numbers, if you remember. Rational numbers are numbers, any number that can be expressed as a fraction. Well, obviously, irrational means not rational. So irrational means a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. And the only numbers that we have that do that are numbers that are non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. OK, so I just want to, again, from what we said a minute ago, pi can be approximated. And remember, that's approximate, OK? We talked about that a little bit. but let me write it down now. That means approximately. Pi can be approximately um, rounded to 3.14 as a decimal. Now, I know this is really weird because I just said pi was irrational. There it is as a decimal. But now I'm going to show it to you as a fraction. You're going to say, I thought you just said an irrational number can't be expressed as a fraction. You're making me nuts. Well, that's true. It can't be expressed as a fraction. However, this is an approximation for pi. And it's 22 over 7. A lot of people use this approximation when they're working with fractions, and this appro approximation when you're working with decimals. OK, so pi is an irrational number, a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. There are other irrational numbers, but all of them are numbers that are non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. Let me show you that as we, as we take a look here. OK, finally, the last set of numbers we're going to talk about. Remember, again, we're going to build on these numbers. We have the natural numbers. The natural numbers were 1, 2, 3, 4. We can count with them. We can tell people our age. I don't want to tell people my age, but anyway. Then we needed n more numbers, so we got the whole, whole numbers. And the whole number had included only one more number, the number 0. But then we needed integers. Integer included lots of more numbers, infinitely many more numbers, because they, had a, they came with all the negative numbers. I'll just give you one, I believe. And then we had that big set we talked about the last time we used this chart. And they were, look, the big mama. The big mama were the rational numbers. OK? The big mama were the rational numbers. Let me just pull this aside for a minute. So there you go. And in the big no mama, the rational numbers, you had fractions, or all of these numbers, because we can express all of these numbers as fractions. Well, now we just talked about the circumference divided by the diameter as being 3.14 dot, dot, dot. That dot, dot, dot became a decimal that was non-repeating, because there's no repeating numbers, and non-terminating, because it did not end. Those types of numbers are called irrational numbers. Those types of numbers cannot go inside here because natural numbers aren't irrational, whole numbers are not irrational, integers are not irrational, rational numbers are not irrational. They're either rational or irrational. One example is pi, but any, any decimal that's non-repeating, non-terminating is an irrational number. And what we do know is all the rational numbers, because these are all rational, remember, plus all the irrational numbers are the real numbers. OK? And that's how all the sets are related. OK, so now what we showed you is that pi is always equal to the circumference of any circle, no matter how big, how small, is the circumference of any circle divided by the diameter of the circle. I'm going to use a little math here. <laughs> that's what we've been doing all day. That's so silly. But we're going to use a little algebra here. Um, I want to solve this for c. Because circum circumference is what I ultimately want to find here. So I'm going to solve this for C. Listen, you can do this with me, because I, I know you can follow me here. This is a fractional equation. By the way, this is called a literal equation. I, I, this is just an FYI extra. Okay? This is called a literal equation, because we're not solving for a number. We're actually solving for other letters in terms of other letters. That's kind of cool. We'll do, we'll do more of that later. At any rate, we're solving for C here. We know this is a fractional equation. So I'd like to get rid of the fraction. We do that by multiplying both sides by the LCD. So I'm going to do that right now. The LCD is D here. Okay, It's not a number, but a letter. I'm going to rewrite this so I have some space. 
So we're going to multiply both sides of this by d. Okay, so now we have pi d equals, d goes into d once, d goes into d once, c. Notice what we just said then. c stands for circumference. I'm going to write it like this. c equals pi d. Okay, remember d is for diameter. So c is for circumference. And d is for diameter. So look what we know now. We know if we have the diameter of a circle, to get the circumference, all we have to do is multiply it by pi. What is pi? Approximately 3.14. If you want an exact answer, you leave your answer in terms of pi. Because believe it or not, now they have, obviously, computers, but also calculators that have a pi button, and they take pi out to about nine places. Okay, and that's more exact. Because understand, when you have a decimal that doesn't terminate, let me explain what terminate ends. Terminate means, terminate means ends. When you have a decimal that does not end, it keeps going, like pi does, 3.14, blah, 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 keeps going, okay? I cannot get an exact answer, because I'm going to have to round somewhere. But if so, if you want an exact answer, you keep your answer in terms of pi. If you want a rounded answer, you, ca you can round pi to 3.14. But let me show you something else. C equals pi d. Some of you are probably going, oh, I kind of remember that. But I thought, I, I thought it was something else. I, I swore I thought it was something else. Watch this. Remember what we said here before. We said that the diameter is made up of twice the radius. So watch what we have. Okay? We know C equals pi d. C equals pi d. Now look, I'm doing this to explain how to do it, but you never have to do this again. So don't think you ever have to do this. But we can take out the d and put in 2r, because d is the same thing as 2r. We're substituting. And you might have seen this formula like this. C equals 2 pi r. That's generally the way it's written. So here's what I know. To find the circumference of a circle, I can either use pi d or 2 pi r. Now, one thing I have to tell you, which is absolutely up to you, some people say, well, use this formula when you have the diameter, use this formula when you have the radius. I think that's too much work. Pick a formula you like and stick with it, okay? A lot of people use 2 pi r, believe it or not. So I'm going to stick with 2 pi r, but again, I could use pi d. It doesn't matter. Okay, again, pick your own poison. So I'm going to do this Mormon problem with the, with the wheel. It says C equals 2 pi r, and it says uh, given the diameter of this. Now, on, in your notes, in your workbook, I, I showed you one where I used this formula, but I'm going to show you and get the same, form, the same answer using this, okay? D equals 4.66. But I could use C equals pi d, and that'll make it, well, I'm going to do both ways, in fact. I can make it short and simple. If I want an approximate answer, here's what I would do. C equals pi d, and this is approximately 3.14 times the diameter, which is 4.66. Okay? Well, if I multiply that, I will get 14.3624 feet. And, of course, you'd multiply it on the side. However, if I wanted to, I could use C equals 2 pi r, watch why. I'm not going to do the whole problem, I'm just going to watch the watch. c equals 2 times pi times the radius, which is, well, what is the radius? The radius is half of the diameter. So that would be a little more work here. I have to take half. 2.33, but just watch this. 2.33. Now I can multiply any way I want. I could multiply these two first and look what I'd get. 4.66 times this. Or I could multiply these two together first. It doesn't matter how I multiply. But again, you'll get your same answer. So again, some people like to use this formula when you have the diameter, this formula when you have the radius, or some people like to just pick one. It's absolutely up to you. Pick your own poison. But the important part is that you understand these are the formulas. Okay? So if you're asked for an exact answer, you're going to leave your answer in terms of pi. If you're not, 
then we're just going to change pi to 3.14 or 22 over 7. So let's do an example. Okay. We have a Ferris wheel problem. Obviously, a Ferris wheel is in the shape of a circle, and it says that its diameter was 250 feet. Diameter was 250 feet. Okay, and find its circumference, give an exact answer and an approximate answer. Let's do exact here, approximate here. Okay, absolutely up to you, but since both formulas are on the board, why not use pi d because we're given d? Could you use 2 pi r? Yes, but what would you have to do first? You'd have to get the radius. How would you get the radius? You'd have to divide that by 2, but you, already, you have it on the board. I'm not, you know, it's right there. It's simple. Let's use it. C equals pi d. Exact answer. Ready? Exact answer. Write the formula down. Substitute. C equals 250 pi. And it's in feet. So it's feet. That's your exact answer. 250 pi. That's it. I can't get, that's exact answer in terms of pi. Exact answers must stay in terms of pi. Do you want an approximate answer? I have to take pi, change it to 3.14, and I have to multiply that, and that is 785, I think we're doing feet, yep, feet. So that's the answer to that question. That's, that's the end of circumference of a circle, that's where the circumference formula came from. You can use either this formula or this formula, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide decimals.